Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of our workshop on informing environmental health decisions through data integration. So my name is Margaret Karagas. I'm from Dartmouth College, and I've had the pleasure and privilege of serving on the standing committee and the organizing committee for this workshop. And I'm thankful to the NAS folks and our absolutely superb speakers from yesterday for uh, their illuminating presentations and sharing their pearls of wisdom and their experience with us. And as you heard yesterday, we come from very diverse backgrounds. So each of us are coming from a different place. But we know that our ability to integrate and amalgamate data is from different sources and disparate model systems and different resolutions and collected for different purposes will play an ever-growing role in our future. And so this is um, what is going to happen. And as Linda said, we will be sharing our data more broadly. And this means that the concepts that we've covered in this workshop will be part of our future. So my perspective is as an epidemiologist. So through our studies, we've enrolled about 10,000 people over the years for various studies. Um, some of our recent work is we've enrolled close to 2,000 maternal infant dyads. And some of our recent work is you know, using some of the concepts that have been presented in some of the earlier workshop and exposomics we put the myexposome wristband on pregnant women. We're extracting ultrasound records from the electronic medical record. We're doing metabolomics in the moms during pregnancy and in infant cord blood and collaborating with cheer. We're doing 3D images of the metalome and placenta. And then in early childhood, we look at exposures like where I come from in the northeast of wood smoke. Um, we had to create, we do an air monitor and an accelerometer on little kids. We had to make this little like froggy harness so they could hold it. And I'm looking forward to hopefully collaborating with this PRISM program at some point with some of their wonderful sensors. Um, we're looking at green space and for us, white space and blue space using geospatial methods. Um, we're doing networks of my, my, the microbial communities. We're doing DEXA scans, and so we have image data looking at body mass and body fat. So, and then later on, we're, t we're doing teeth analyses that give us a trajectory of exposure starting in utero. So then we call people for interviews, we have spirometry, and then of course the EHR. So now we're faced with the challenge of how are we going to integrate all these data coming from all these different data streams. Well, as an academic, one solution is you start training programs <laughs> so we can prepare the next generation to help us and collaborate with us and learn all these new tools since our students have the skills and um, have grown up in this age of computer science and advanced technologies. So we start with a postdoctoral training program at Dartmouth. It's a cross-disciplinary training program that laid the foundation for a PhD program that provides theoretical PhD training in three disciplines, epidemiology, biostatistics, and bioinformatics under one umbrella program. Um, I think it's a very unique program. And so students get training in these core disciplines and we also bridge with other sciences, the laboratory sciences, engineering, health policy, and clinical medicine. Um, it's a very challenging program, and I'm hoping some of our students are listening in on this workshop. Um, we've benefited from the BD2K program, and so we're very grateful for that. And we've just recently started a master's program So yesterday, we covered a lot. Wow. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to reflect as an epidemiologist. Um, 
I think we had a wonderful foundation, framework, and focus to start the day, uh, focusing on defining what is the question that we're asking, and this came up repeatedly, and it's not just what we can do, but what we should do, and that we need to rethink the way we're doing things, but at the same time, keep what's, what we're doing well, so we don't have to let go of that. We heard about Hercules and the Exposome Research Center as an opportunity to apply some of these new ideas. Um, we heard about the importance of transparency and replication, reducing measurement error and quality control. So our future is relying on consortium studies. That's the direction we're going in, and it provides greater generalizability but we also heard that it increases complexity and heterogeneity. I mean, it can increase power, and that's one of our motivations, but we heard that it's not always the case. Um, we heard about the importance of looking at nonlinearity, exposure mixtures, and some of the advantages of actually pooling the actual data and the advantage of having a shared data center. So we heard about this in the context of the Children's Health Exposure Analysis Resource, CHEER, um, and their Data re Repository Analysis and Science Center. And we heard about multi-level quality control, a very rigorous program looking at intra and inter-lab QC measures. So our NIEHS has made tremendous investments to make data and knowledge available to researchers. Um, including supporting the innovative workshops and critical resources like the Comparative Toxicogenomics Database, the Toxicoinformatics Visualization Tools, Big Data to Knowledge Initiative, and they support the FAIR, the findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable principles. Obviously, the CHEER program is huge and its potential expansion. Um, with the Personalized Medicine Initiative and NIH, NIEHS's participation in the NIH Data Commons Initiative and more. Then we were introduced to the principles of ontology, which is new to many of us, certainly for me, but it's clearly requisite to identifying and integrating multiple data streams. We can't do it if we can't have that ontology and then we need it to be reproducible and to support decision making. So we heard about the process of building ontologies, which was also new to me, and then obviously not reinventing the wheel, but building on ontologies that already exist. So we're thankful for that presentation. And then we heard about the application to cheer, and again, highlighting the importance of diverse teams. We need all of our input from our, all of our disciplines to make these decisions. Um, we heard about data sharing and some of the special considerations for human subjects and institutions themselves. So we heard about BioCaddy, uh, DataMed, uh, DataMed to search repositories and data sets. It's a really cool tool. I would look at it if you haven't already. And then we talked about approaches to sharing data while protecting individual privacy and institutions. So we heard quite what I thought was a simplified paradigm. I don't, we didn't really talk about cost effectiveness, but it seemed like a pretty um, innovative and clear way of incorporating data and at the same time protecting uh, institutional privacy. And then we heard innovative methods for engaging participants on the decision on whether or not to share their data and samples, which I thought was really interesting as well. Then we moved on to emerging approaches to environmental health data integration with clinical outcomes. So we've heard about the Precision Medicine Initiative called All of Us which is huge. This is going to be one million or more participants. That's incredible. And then we heard specifically about the California Precision Medicine Consortium leveraging health provider organizations as well as volunteers and using a bunch of innovative tools and consenting and, of course, EHR, wearables. And the protocol is available for the All of Us study and input is being sought. 
Um, and then the EHR is here. We saw it. <laughs> Using the EHR for disease phenotyping and integration with genotype was presented to us. We heard about the eMERGE network of biorepositories linked to EHR data. For example, the Marshall and Marshfield Clinic and its use of the PhenX toolkit for a standardized instrument. Another direction that a lot of research is going, standardized instruments. We heard about the PLATO platform for the analysis, translation, and, and organization of large-scale data. So we're thankful to have these tools. Um, we heard about integration of high-resolution data from personal real-time monitors, and so sensors and other risk factor data to predict health outcomes. So we heard the example of the PRISM program. So the, these sensors help us to understand time course, context, new sources of exposure, heterogeneity and response, and can inform patient management. And then we heard about the caveats and cautions as well. So we ha also heard about data integration recent advances in the context of risk assessment um, with integration of multiple data streams, human, mechanistic, and animal, illustrated by the EPA's integrated risk assessment system for chemical assessments. We heard about data integration approaches for hazard and exposure assessment through the RISC-21 platform and its application to predict new uh, untested compounds and prioritize chemicals of concern. Then we also heard about connecting people to data and the importance of relationships between the end users and the data generations. And we heard about open tox collaboration for predictive toxicology, tox bank as a portal to facilitate best practices, and the new global initiative, Nano Commons. So that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> then we turned to our data visualization mini course and got some practical guidelines and basic concepts. So how to use visualization to make better sense, connections, decisions, and a visualization carpet, if you're interested. Um, we <laughs> heard about the concept of data counseling as a process of bringing together stakeholders into designing data visuals, which I thought was really important as well. So I tried to find um, an interesting visual, um, which I couldn't. So I'll just show you my Border Collie tip. Um, he's very clever, according to the graph that we saw. And he's been trained to sheep herd. And he's quite good. So if you're ever in Vermont, please stop by. We'll give you a demo. So welcome to day two. We're very excited about uh, delving a bit deeper here. We'll hear three illustrative data integration examples today. Um, and we'll kind of get the full pipeline of like the data collection to the analysis to informing a specific decision. And so we're really excited about getting some of those real life examples and contemporary issues that we face. And then first, we'll begin from hearing from John Wilbanks, the Chief Common Officer of Sage uh, BioNetworks, talking about science, open collaboration, and new methods. Thank you so much, John, for coming.